Chapter 15 The Roads We Drive One Hour Later Manuel drove with the biker bros in his car to the Kirifuda estate. Stoker and Spitfire decided to ride with Takami, guessing that Manuel would want to spend more time catching up with the others. Besides, Stoker needed to catch up with his daughter, and there wasn't room in Manuel's car anyway. So, Manuel's car got upgraded by this Katami June, or otherwise known as the Devil's Tuner? Stoker asked. Yep, that's right, Takami said. He doesn't have a sense of the word safety, though, and that concerns me if Manuel plans to continue to race in that thing. He put high-performance racing parts in that car, along with making the body feather light, and with his engine upgrades alone, the Focus now tops out at over 750 horsepower. It's become a savage beast. Sounds like overkill, Stoker said. But I can understand why he did it if he wanted to save us. So do I, Takami said. I have a feeling it would have done that just for any of us. But why did he have to go that far? Takami gripped the steering wheel in anger, his face twisting into a glare. I know his options were limited, but going that far? Upgrading his car to dangerous levels? He could have died tonight! Stoker looked at Takami calmly. Takami, ask yourself this. What would you have done if you were in his place? Takami was silent. He couldn't think of anything Manuel could have done differently. He couldn't go to the police. They'd think he was crazy. He couldn't negotiate with Kaido either. He knew that wouldn't have gone through no matter how much he tried. I guess maybe he couldn't have done anything different, Takami said. I just worry because he's my friend. I don't want him to die in some inferno just because he lost control. That car is dangerous to race now. I'm not sure even if it'll be drivable on Akina, Bogus, or any mountain pass or togue for that matter. It's just too dangerous now. Takumi was starting to cry, tears rolling down from his eyes. I just don't want him to die. Not while he's racing. Takumi, listen to me. Stoker said, putting hand on Takumi's shoulder. Whenever you get behind the wheel of any car or vehicle, there's always a risk. These are not toys, and I'm sure Manuel understands that well, even more so after tonight. Even you take risks when you get behind the wheel, whether you race or do it for deliveries. We all take risks that way, regardless of being of car, motorcycle, or any vehicle. You can try to take measures to decrease the risk, but it'll always be there, no matter what you do. You just have to let it go. We all choose our paths, our own roads to drive. You can't change that, Takumi. No matter what you do, you can't change it. Also, think of it this way. What if Manuel wanted to change your road because of the way you drive? I know you wouldn't like it if he tried, but he wouldn't be able to stop you, just like you can't stop him. I know it hurts, but don't let it discourage him or you. Takumi sighed. Stoker did have a point. Well, what can I do? Stick by him. Stoker said. That's the best thing you can do. Don't let the matter, whether it be speed, horsepower, or anything else, separate you. You guys have known each other for two years now, and I can't imagine anyone else he'd rather have as a wingman, regardless of the racing course or car he drives. Takami sighed, looking at the blue focus out in front of his 8-6 as they drove through the city of Tokyo. By now, it was pretty late, and traffic was letting up some. It wouldn't be long before they would be at the Kirifuda estate. So, you guys must have been back for a while to get yourself in that much trouble. Manuel said as he talked with Throttle, Moto, and Vinny. We've been here for about six months, Throttle said. That's how long it took us between interference from new and old enemies and tracking out Stoker to get a new regenerator. I... I didn't want you involved because of the dangers. 
Well, I suppose this is the part where I'd say you could have called or something, but I'm not going to go there. Manuel said, surprising everyone. I'm sure you had your reasons, Throttle, and I respect that. Besides, it's done now. Manuel gave him a warm smile. It looks like my brother is watching out for both of us these days. Yeah, you could say that. Throttle said, remembering his near-death experience. All right, enough. Let's save the victory bash when we get Carbine and Charlie back. Vinny said. With you as help, it should be easy enough. Are you sure we can trust him, Manuel? Moto asked. He was your rival, you know. He was under pressure from his father to build a lasting legacy. Manuel answered, reassuring them. I'm sure he hated every moment of it, no matter the fame or fortunes he got from it. I'm willing to give him a last chance. Kaido, however, is a different story. Where do you think Yuya will go? Moto asked. I was thinking of offering to move him and whatever belongings he can pack into his car or shipping containers to the States. It may be a long way from his homeland, but that might be a good thing considering Kaido's possible influence. Hmm. Sounds good, I guess. Vinny said. Manuel put a hand on Throttle's shoulder, smiling. I wish it were under better circumstances, but it's good to see all of you again. Yeah, yeah sure, no man. The biker mice replied. 